This lesson is an introduction to Exchange Server 2010 server roles. Now if you're familiar with previous versions of Exchange Server, uh, there are some things you may not be aware of in Exchange Server 2010 with regards to the server roles. So we're just going to cover those quickly uh, to bring everyone up to speed and, and get on the same page. So previously in Exchange Server 2003 we had uh, these concepts of server roles. Now the, the Exchange Server 2003 itself was installed in the same way no matter which role you were configuring it for. Uh, but then through a series of configurations you could sort of um, place it into these various roles within the organization. So the first role was the one that is known as the front-end server in Exchange Server 2003 and that was typically uh, the server that was um, often internet facing and was accepting client communications for things like Outlook Web Access and ActiveSync. Uh, in Exchange Server 2007 and 2010 that server role is now known as the Client Access Server Role, which is a dedicated server role uh, specifically for client traffic um, in the form of Webmail, ActiveSync, Outlook Anywhere, and so on. In Server 2003, there was also the concept of a bridgehead server, so that was a, a server that was configured on uh, a routing group connector or an SMTP connector and was responsible for routing mail in and out of that routing group. In Exchange Server 2007 and 2010. Uh, there is now a dedicated server role called the Hub Transport Server Role. So the Hub Transport Server Role is basically responsible for email routing uh, within the organization and outside of that, in and out of the organization as well in most cases. And also in Exchange Server 2003, there was the concept of a back-end server, and that was basically the servers that were hosting the mailbox and public folder databases in the organization. And once again, in Exchange Server 2007 and uh, 2010, that's been uh, now given a dedicated mailbox server role. So that server is responsible for hosting any mailbox or public folder databases in the organization. Now, in addition to those server roles, um, any Exchange Server 2003 org uh, often had uh, some other systems that were integrated into Exchange in various ways. So uh, there may have been a third-party antivirus or anti-spam system um, running on a, a dedicated server or an, an edge appliance of some kind. In Exchange Server 2007 and 2010, we now have a role known as the Edge Transport Server role, uh, which is a server that is specifically designed to sit within a secure DMZ environment and uh, be responsible for uh, secure message transport in and out of the organization. Although it is an optional server role that is not mandatory in all organizations and uh, many customers simply allow their hub transport servers to uh, be responsible for mail routing in and out of the organization or they'll continue to use a third party system or, or appliance uh, for that role. And finally uh, for Exchange Server 2003 uh, often there was integration with third party phone and voicemail systems so in uh, Exchange Server 2007 and 2010, we have the Unified Messaging Server role, uh, which is an Exchange Server role uh, that makes it possible to, uh, for example, bring voicemail uh, messages into the inbox uh, for Mailbox users. Now, those roles were introduced with Exchange Server 2007, but they've gone through some uh, minor adjustments in the transition from 2007 to Exchange Server 2010. First of all, the client access server role has changed a little bit. In Exchange Server 2007, the client access server was responsible for uh, webmail, ActiveSync, and other web services. But in Exchange Server 2000, uh, 2010, that role has expanded to also include uh, Outlook client MAPI communications. So, whereas previously in Exchange Server 2007, an Outlook client would connect directly to their mailbox server to gain access to their mailbox. Now in Exchange Server 2010, they connect to a client access server uh, for that MAPI communication and their connection is uh, basically proxied to the mailbox server role. The Hub Transport server has uh, largely remained the same. There has been some uh, sort of granular enhancements and, and things like that, but from a, a server role perspective, it is largely the same. And the mailbox server role, uh, as I mentioned, it no longer is responsible for MAPI communications for mailboxes, but it continues to be responsible for uh, direct MAPI connections for public folders. 
and the edge transport and unified messaging server roles uh, have also stayed uh, basically the same between those two versions of Exchange. Now these different server roles can be installed uh, in various ways within the organization. So in a, a smaller or more simple organization you might do what's known as a typical server installation and that's an installation where all of the server roles are installed uh, all of the mandatory server roles are installed on one single server. The mandatory server roles are the client access server, hub transport server and Marbox server. Or you can go the other way which is a dedicated server approach where each server role is installed separately onto their own dedicated server uh, and that is more common in uh, larger and more, complicated, uh, more complex environments. Those server roles can also coexist in different combinations, so it's not unusual to see client access and hub transport servers coexisting uh, together uh, in environments where then the Marbox data uh, servers themselves are dedicated servers. So it's not unusual to see a uh, mix and match of different roles installed in different ways on those servers. But there are a few rules about server role uh, coexistence. Um, Basically, coexistence is possible between any combination of client access server, hub transport server, and mailbox server. Uh, you can combine those in any combination uh, that you wish. Um, it basically comes down to uh, server hardware requirements and making sure that you size your servers correctly. But coexistence is not possible or it's not recommended in the case of the edge transport server role. That is a server that must be installed um, on a dedicated server of its own. The unified messaging server role, it can coexist with client access, hub transport and mailbox servers. Um, it's typically not recommended because the unified messaging is a very uh, process, uh, processor intensive uh, role because of the amount of audio processing that is required to um, uh, record voicemails. And as one caveat to the combination of client access servers and mailbox servers, you can't combine client access servers that are in an NLB cluster, so that's network load balancing cluster, with mailbox servers that are also members of a DAG, which is a database availability group. And that comes more into high availability, which is something we're going to look at uh, perhaps in a later module in this training series. Uh, but for now, just understand that if you choose to use client access servers with NLB, those servers can't also be mailbox servers in a DAG and vice versa. So if you've got any other questions about uh, the different Exchange Server 2010 uh, server roles, uh, by all means go into the Exchange Server Pro forums and uh, ask your questions and I'll do my best to answer them.